Hello and welcome to this video. This is the final coding video on the course. It's a little bit of an addendum. We're not going to adjust the bot. What we're going to do is make a class which can calculate the number of units that we would want to trade for a given trade margin and also calculate the trade margin for a given number of units. And what this will do, this will also set you up to be able to calculate all sorts of other things like position size and risk percentage and all that kind of thing. Once you've seen the basics of how this works, then it's uh, fairly straight, straightforward to do any kind of uh, trade calculation. Now, I'm going to talk through the code in this video. It's already prepared. It's all on GitHub, of course. So I'd recommend you just copy and paste it in as you need, because it's nothing that you really haven't seen before. And it would be a little bit boring to start typing all of this out. So I'm going to start in the Oanda API and you'll see that we have a new line here called from Oanda price import Oanda price. And that's because we have in a new file called Oanda price and inside there is a new class called Oanda price. We also have a new uh, file called trade calculator, which I'll come to in a minute. So why do we have this Oanda price? Well, to calculate the trade margins and the number of units and things like that, we actually need to know the current price information for a given pair, funnily enough. Now we're doing that getting information from the can yes, but it's better usually in these cases to get the actual up-to-date live raw price for a, for a given pair. So in Oanda's documentation, they have this pricing endpoint. They also have a streaming endpoint for the pricing as well, if you want it really raw and live. And there's an example of how the endpoint is used somewhere down here. Here it is to get the Euro, US dollar, US Canadian dollar. It's very simple. You just go to the pricing URL. Whoops, close that. And then you send in, it says somewhere here, yep, a comma separated list of the pairs that you want. So we see an example request here where we've got instruments is equal. So the instruments is the key in our parameters. And that's equal to US dollar, Euro, US dollar, comma, and then US dollar, Canadian dollar. So percentage 2C is just a URL encoding of a comma. Important as ever, the response body, we get back an object. That has a key prices and that has a list. And inside that list, we have an object which represents each of the pairs we were interested in. So we have an instrument key, which says it's the Euro US dollar in this case. Uh, we've got close out, ask and bid, which is useful for using if you want to know the exact price you'll close a trade at, depending on whether you close using the ask or the bid. Important for us are the asks and the bids here. So we get a list of the ask prices and a list of the bid prices. I generally have no idea where we've got two of these inside here. The liquidity number is the same. Uh, the price is often extraordinary similar. I simply take the first price of each of the prices inside this list. The other thing we have which is really useful and makes the whole thing much much simpler than it otherwise would be is this quote home conversion factor. So this fact here allows us to convert the pair in question into our local home currency. So if you're working in I don't know, the Swiss franc, then you can use this conversion factor to convert the euro US dollar and the amounts back into Swiss francs so you know exactly in your home currency how much the trade is going to be. Also important here, but not for this video or this bot indeed, but it's very useful for you, is this status. So Forex pairs run generally from, I think, 24 hours a day from Monday to Friday. But if you're trading commodities like gold and oil or indexes like the FTSE and things like that, they usually stop for an hour or two. And some of them actually stop more than once per day and this status here will give you tradable non-tradable or invalid I think if I remember correctly and you can use the just basically say is it tradable or not and if it's not then you know that your bot should uh, ignore trying to do something with it so what we're going to do is we're going to extract some information using the keys that you've seen here that we can then use in our margin calculations so I'm going to talk through the changes that I've made then to go about doing this so the first one is we've got this Oanda price so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Oando API, get that list of price objects we've just been looking at. And then much as we did actually with the Oanda trade, you'll remember that we get a trade from the API object that comes back and we set up all of the values here. We do an almost identical thing inside Oanda price, except I've realized actually as I look at it now, I did it slightly differently in the sense that instead of sending in an API object to the initialization, I actually initialized all the values that we need here like so and took the information out of the keys here. But it shouldn't be very difficult to understand what's been done there. The other critical thing here is I'm calculating the mid conversion and the mid price as well. And for our calculations in this video, we're going to be using the mid conversion and the mid price. Now, if you want really high accuracy, of course, depending on a sell or a buy, you'll want to use the ask, bid, sell and buy 
conversion uh, rates and prices as well and not these mids. Now with something like the Euro US dollar it doesn't really matter, they're very very close but of course if you're doing, I don't know, South African Rand against the Brazilian Real or something like this then the spread is probably going to be very wide and you'll want to make sure you've got slightly better accuracy. So back into the Oendo API, the first change is in this fetch instrument. So we now have a URL here and we have some optional parameters which are a pairs list because also the instrument endpoint has an option of sending some parameters in where the key is the instrument and the value is then a comma separated representation of the list. This comma and join here, I'm not sure if we've seen it already inside the course, but all it does is take a list that we give in and it'll give us then a comma separated string representation of all the values in the list. In other words, if we had a list of pairs, we'll now get one long string where the pairs are separated by a comma. This doesn't affect the rest of the bot because this pairs list has a default value of none and if it's none then we don't send in any parameters so the function works exactly uh, as it has always worked. Then the most important part is the fetch prices function. Now this is very, very similar to the uh, open trades one. So we've got the pricing, we've got our pairs list, we create our comma separated pairs list here, we make our request, we cross our fingers that we've got a status code 200, otherwise things haven't worked. And then we used object or dictionary comprehension to make ourselves an object where we have a key and then each value is one of these Oanda price objects that's uh, inside here created using this price from API. So the end of this call what we should be returning as prices here is an object with a key of each of the pairs we're interested in and the value being the prices and that price information is the, the pair, the ask, the bid, the mid, sell conversion, buy conversion and mid conversion. So just to demonstrate that, make sure everything's okay, I've actually pre-prepared down the bottom here just loading up a couple of pairs here making sure that the price is print okay to the screen. And if I run that in the console you can see I get euro US dollar as the key and then the value has the pair name and the information inside so that's looking okay. So we have our price, we have our under API, now all we have to do is create ourselves a new object and I've called that trade unit calculator. So this object here has two functions, it has get trade margin for units and get units for margin. It takes in as a parameter the API and a pairs list. Now I'm anticipating you'll probably want to use this inside a bot so you will, your bot would have an instance of a trade unit calculator and use it to make the calculations. So if I go back into the bot, you remember that we get the units from the settings here, they were hard coded into the settings. Well it might be that you'll make yourself somewhere on the bot here like as we do for the API, you'll meet yourselves another property which is the trade unit calculator and actually calculate the number of units for each pair you want to trade specifically based say on the margin that you want to trade for example. So we take in the API and we take in the pairs list and these can be sent in probably from the bot or just individually created so that you can test the functionality. Then we get the current instrument states from the OANDA API. Now the interesting thing to hear, note here is that I'm doing this inside the initialization of the trade unit calculator. So if you do have this on your bot, it'll initialize this information when it's first created in the init but never again. You might want to think about taking this out and maybe making a reset function or something on this class so that you can refresh the information that it has. I'll leave it here for, for now though. Then we make our margin rates which is the critical thing from the PI here. So for each of the pairs we get ourselves the margin rate which comes back from the OANDA API for each of the instruments because this margin rate is important to know how much margin we're going to need to uh, contribute towards a trade. And we also then for all of the pairs that are listed here load ourselves the prices from the OANDA API. And then we move down to the code to actually make the calculation. And the good news is because of this conversion rate things are pretty simple and straightforward. So getting the trade margin for units, we send in the number of units we want to trade, let's say 5,000. We send in the pair so we can get our margin rate on the account because it's not always the same, it changes between pairs. We can get the current price for a pair as well or the current price object let's say. And then the trade margin, I guess it's really straightforward but it's just the mid price multiplied by the margin rate, multiplied the conversion, multiplied by the number of units and that will give you in your local home currency, be it euros, dollars or whatever, the amount of margin for this number of units that you'll need to uh, put on for the trade. And then just using a little bit of maths with this, we switch the formula around that if we want to say trade 5,000 euros for a trade on a given pair, then we get the margin rate and the price and the number of units then is that margin divided by the price multiplied by the rate multiplied by the mid conversion. Now remember I'm using the mid 
here. You might want to upgrade this and have the trade direction in here to be a bit more accurate and use the ask or the bid and the bid conversion or the ask conversion. And then returning the units cast as an integer here, that might seem a bit odd, but when you trade stuff um, like some of the stock indexes, which can cost over a thousand euros per unit, it can actually make quite a difference the amount of margin you're putting on the trade if you don't round the units. Yes, you're not able to trade, say, 8.4 units. You'd have to trade eight units in this case if you didn't want to exceed your uh, your margin and then inside the main what we have here we're making an instance of the oanda api we've got four pairs that i want to look at here each one sort of progressing let's say in difficulty my account is euro so i got euro us dollar pound yen australian dollar new zealand dollar and singapore dollar swiss franc then i make an instance of the trade unit calculator here looping through each of the pairs that we have here and really <laughs> that's uh, not very good let's loop through the pairs like so and then I'm going to print the pair. I'm going to print rounded to two decimal places, the trade margin for 10,000 units on that pair, just fixed to have a look. And then we're going to go the other way around. We're going to say for 2,000 euros, how many units would we actually need to put on? And we're going to verify this now with the OANDA interface. So I can also, <laughs> for my own uh, security, make sure that uh, I've got this more or less right. So just running that in the console, you can see that we've got the margin here in the first column. So for the 10,000 units, that's the margin in euros for me. And then for the 2,000 euro margin, we've got the number of units we need to trade here. Now we're going to take a look at this on the OANDA interface. Now bear in mind here that the prices are fluctuating, so the numbers are going to be very slightly different, but I want to check it anyway. So let's go to the Singapore dollar Swiss franc. We'll just click buy and I'm going to get 10,000 units get the console call get the console back up and you can see that our calculation said 312 euros 46 and we've got 312 euros 42 so it seems pretty accurate to me then the other one we want to look at is actually a 2000 euro margin it said we need 64008 units so let's put that in and we can see that we've got 19999.8 or 0.78 uh, euros as the margin so that looks like that one's working let's just try one more we'll try the pound yen that says 52,006 units. So I switched to the pound yen and you can see 52,006 units has got me nigh exact uh, 2,000 euro margin. And now let's uh, change things around and put the 10,000 units inside there. And we can see we've got 384.54 and we've got 384.57 on the application here. OK, so hopefully that little bit there will show you how you go down the road of calculating uh, all of the financial things you need to calculate to be able to get the amount uh, of units and things that uh, you want to be able to trade. Correct. OK, then. So as I said, final coding video for this series in the next video will just be a bit of a wrap up, a little uh, insight into the system I use. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.